All right, we're about to start playing a G and C, and Sophia's gonna do a rules explanation. All right, so this is IG and C. We each represent a different civilization on or around the IG and C, and we are going to fight over control of the IG and C with the goal of shipping as many goods back to our home as possible by the end of the game. We've each got our own separate deck of cards, and the game will be over when any of us needs to draw from our deck, but we're out of cards. On our, so the first thing I need to explain is that cards can represent a lot of things depending on where they are. So we have in play a number of islands. We have three home islands, one belonging to each of us. I'm playing the Cretans, Garrett here is playing the Ephesians, and Andy is playing the Rhodians. We also have three islands, three non-home islands in play at the start of the game, and over the course of the game we can add up to three more. On the each of us has cards of a different color, and these determine whose cards they are for almost everything. So a card at the top of an island is a temple card. A card, and it's my temple card. It's not anyone else's temple card. You can tell because of the color of the card. Same thing for ships. A card on the left is a ship. You'll notice that there's little icons, temple, ship, populous. A card at the bottom is populous. Goods, on the other hand, are different. A good over here, a card over here is not anyone's good. Instead, this is a die good because it's a purple card. The other types of goods are timber goods, electrum goods, bronze goods, and marble goods. And the goods don't belong to anyone. We're competing to get them back to our home, but while they're out on the table, they belong to whoever can grab them. So, on our turn, we started the game with one non-home island in play, one for each of us, and each with a random card from the top of our deck. And we're going to take turns in clockwise order, playing. And on our turn, our options are... The main thing we do is a basic action. A basic action means we will play a card from our hand and do the basic action that matches the preference of the card. The preference of the card is shown in a couple of ways. It's little colored dots in the lower left and upper right of the card. It's also a large colored bar somewhere on the card. And that bar is positioned to act as a kind of handy reminder of what that basic action does. So let's go through each of the, there's five different preferences, and I'll just go through each of them and explain what that basic action does. The basic bronze action with a bronze preference is to add a populace. Adding a populace means you take a card from your hand and add it as a populace to any non-home island. Now, when you play a card for its preference, that is not the card you're using for the action. So if I play this card right here with a bronze preference in order to take a bronze basic action, I'm not going to make this card into a populace. Instead, I'm going to take a different card from my hand, which can be any preference at all. It doesn't matter and I'm going to add it as a populace wherever I like. The, so that's a bronze basic action. A marble basic action is exactly the same except that I'm adding a timber or ugh, I'm adding a temple. So a marble looks like this. It's white colored and the bar, colored bar here is on the top of the card to remind you that a marble basic action means making a temple. So if I play this as my action I take a card and I say, this is a temple now. Oh, so the point of having population is that whoever has the most population controls the island. An island controls the island. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. The point of having temples at an island is that if you have temples at an island where there's goods, those temples will let you draw extra cards when it's time to refill your hand. The timber action looks like this. It's dark brown and the bar is on the left to remind you that you're dealing with the left side of an island here. A timber action can be either add a ship to an island. So I play this as a timber action. I add a different card as a ship to an island. Or as a basic timber action, I can move any number of ships from one island to another island. 
So if I've got two ships here, then as a timber action, instead of adding a ship, I can say, I'm taking both of these ships and I am moving them somewhere else. It could, the only restriction on movement is that I can't move directly from one home island to a different home island. Everything else is fine. I can move from a home island to a non-home island, non-home to non-home, non-home to someone else's home island if I feel like it. And the main reason you'd move around your ships is because you want to move your stuff with them. Each ship that moves on an action can carry with it one additional card. It can be either one of your population, so that you can go gain control of some island somewhere else, or it can be one of the goods at this island. So if I have, let's say there's two goods at this island, and remember, goods are not mine, goods are just goods at the island and no one owns them. If I want to move my ships here, I can carry away the goods here with me. And in order to carry away goods from an island with ships, you need to have control of the island. <clears throat> In fact, let me say a little bit more about control. Control of the island goes to whoever has the most population there. What if two players are tied? In that case, whoever owns the, whoever has the island color is the controller of that island. So at the beginning of the game, when no one has any population anywhere, I, as the Cretans, control this one. Andy as the Rodians controls this one, and Garrett controls this one. That, that control for having the basic base card on the island works even if you're not involved in the tie. So if Garrett and I both had one population here, then Andy is actually the controller of this island because it's tied, and therefore we just look at the color of the <coughs> island card. So that's one of the main uses of having control of the island is that when you move your ships away, you can choose to have them carry away a good. And if you choose it to carry it back to your home island, that's going to be points at the end of the game because the goal of this game is to have the most is to have goods at your home island at the end of the game. All right, so that's timber. Now let's talk about electrum. Electrum is how the goods actually get out there. So electrum is the green action. Do I actually have any green here? Let me draw. Find more examples. All right. So here's an example of a card with an Electrum preference. It's green. It has a bar on the right side to remind you of that. When you play an Electrum action, you add a good at an island. Now adding a good is a little bit different than adding all the other things. When you add anything else, you just take it from your hand, you put it on the island. Wow, I totally just picked up this island. I don't remember which one it was, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, let's say it was let's say it was that one. Anyway, when I play a good when I play an electrum action, I pick another card from my hand, I discard that card, it goes to a discard pile, and then I use the preference of the card I discarded to decide to grab a card from whatever deck matches it and add that as a good. So if I discard this, I'm adding a marble good. So I grab the top of the marble deck and I put it here. It doesn't really matter what it is very much because I'm never going to get it back in my hand. But that becomes a marble good. This works even if I, if even if it's another player. So I might, for instance, discard a card with a timber preference and that lets me grab a card from Andy's deck and add it to this island where now it's a timber good. The reason why the different types of good matters is because of the details of how the in-game scoring works. At the end of the game, for every good, every good you have, for each type of good, you score the square of the amount you have. So if this is where I'm at at the end of the game, I have five points because my two timber goods get me four points total, two times two, and my single marble good gets me one point, one times one. So there's an incentive here to get lots of the same type of good. <clears throat> and finally, the fifth action I can take is the basic die action. And here's where the text on cards actually matters. So when I take a die action, I have two choices. <clears throat> I can either add an island, which means I take a card from my hand and I grab one of those spare island mats. We have 
three spare island mats. That's always true, no matter how many players are playing. I add it out here. This is now a new island. And then I immediately do the text on the card. The, my other option with a die action is that I can choose any non-home island where I already control it, and I can do the text on that card instead. So, for instance, I could just play this as a die action and say, I'm using the effect of Caledon here, which is under my control because no one has any populace and it's my color. So, when we do effects here, there's a couple of things I want to say about these effects because they are very unintuitive to anyone who has played basically any board game ever. One is that every time a card talks about ships or populace or temples, it always means your populace or your ships or your temples, even though it's not going to say so. So, for instance, we have a card that says, add at least one populace with marble preference to an island with no populace. When it says no populace, it means your populace. You can absolutely use that to add a populace with marble preference to an island where other people have populace. Because cards referring to populace, ships, or temples always just mean yours, unless it specifically says belonging to any player, or something like that. The second strange thing about this game is that when you want to do a card for its effect, you're not allowed to unless you can entirely do the effect. So, for example, you are not allowed to... Well, let's see, where's a good example of one that's... Well, I'll just say that now. We will run into examples of this. If you cannot do an effect entirely, you do not do as much as possible. Instead, you just can't play the effect. So, for instance, you cannot use the effect of this card if there is no island where you have no populace. Or, if you have no card in hand with a marble preference, you're not able to use the effect because it says you have to add a populace with a marble preference. Adding a populace means the same thing. Well, this is the card I'm talking about. It might be easier. Adding a populace means that the same thing it normally does when you take a bronze action. You take a card from your hand, you put it in play on a non on a non-home island as a populace. All right, other than that, there's a few, there's a few wordings that cards use, which I should explain. If a card says pay something, that means it has to be something of yours and you discard it from the island. If the card says replace, that means remove something and add it back in, just as if you were adding it normally, which means if you're adding most things, you just put out there from your hand. If a card says to add a good, that means the same thing as when you're taking an Electrum action. You discard a card from your hand and you pull a good from the top of a deck matching the preference of that card. So that will be explained more during play, I'm sure, as we will run into many examples. All right, so that is all five of the basic actions. Now, after you've done the basic action, so you've done whatever the basic action is corresponding to the preference of the card that you chose, then you have a choice. You can either do the effect on the card as part of your turn, or you can put the card on your home island and save it for later. This is called making it your quest. You might not want to do this because there's no way to actually replace this other than either taking an entire turn to just discard it with no effect, or taking an entire turn to just do the card and then discard it. You cannot, for instance, later on decide you're playing a card and say, oh, I'm just replacing it. It would be nice, but no, none of that. Once you, If you decide to put it on your home island, it locks up your home island until you take a turn just to use and or discard it. All right, so the second thing you can, so that's the main gameplay and that's the thing we'll probably be doing with most of our turns. We'll play a card from our hand, do the basic action corresponding to its preference, perform the effect on the card. Or just discard it if we don't want to perform the effect on the card or can't. Our second option is that we can always just play a card directly 
as a ship or a populace at your home island. So I, I can say I don't want to go play any card with an effect, or maybe I don't have the right preference of card. I can always just grab a card from my hand and say, okay, you're a ship now, or you're a populace at my home island. The third thing you can do on your turn, you can take a quest that you've put there before and do its effect, or you can not do its effect. Either way, you discard it and it frees <coughs> up your home island for another quest. And finally, the fourth thing you can do on your turn is draw new cards. You can only choose to draw new cards if you have fewer than four cards. And when you choose to draw four cards, you draw up to four, and then maybe you get to draw extra cards for your temples. Remember I talked about temples earlier? This is where they actually become useful. If you have a temple at an island, and there are goods at that island, then a number of your temples at the island are called revered, equal to the number of different types of goods. So, to refresh, at your home you want the same types of goods for maximum points. At the... anywhere else where you have temples, you want different types of goods in order to revere as many temples as possible. So, in a situation like this pictured, I have zero revered temples because there's no goods. Now I have one revered temple because there's one type of good. I still have just one revered temple. Now I have two revered temples because there's two different types of goods. For each revered temple, I get to draw an extra card. After I've drawn cards, then, if needed, I will resolve conflict. Conflict is where I get to try to kill the other player's population. Now, when I'm the one drawing cards and doing conflict, there's no chance that my people are going to die. That's not the way conflict works in this game, even if it sounds like you, it might be. Instead, it's just a way to kill other players' people. So, if there's an island where you and another player both have populace, you draw a card from the top of your deck and just put it straight in your discard pile, and that's discarding a card for conflict, you look at the preference of that card, and if that preference matches the color of any card anywhere on this island, populous ships, temples, goods, the island itself, if it matched any of those, then you get to kill one other player's populace. If you also control the island, then you actually get to kill two other players' populace. If multiple other players have populace there, you get to de you decide which populace is lost. So that's a, the conflict is not something you choose to do separately. It's just something you get as a bonus when you decide to draw new cards. Okay, <clears throat> almost done. The last thing we need to know is vainglory. If there's too many cards stacked in an <clears throat> island, our safe limit is 14 in this game. That's 11 <clears throat> plus 1 per player. There can be 14 cards in an island. If there's ever more than 14 cards in an island, the gods are angry at our hubris and destroy the island. We discard every single card on it and put the map back available to be used again. Alright, I think we are ready to play. I'm going to take back all of these example cards, shuffle my deck, deal out a new random one.